For years, we've talked about crash safety, five-star ratings, impact zones, battery protection. But there's a quieter question most reviews never ask. What happens after the crash? Before we go further, take a second to subscribe and turn on notifications. Help Auto Gear Shift move past 23,345 subscribers. Every click genuinely helps us keep this channel analytical and independent. Back to the point. When a modern EV survives a severe impact, safety doesn't end there. It shifts. Because surviving the crash and getting out of the vehicle are two very different problems. One recent Cybertruck accident put this issue back into the spotlight. We're not here to relive that event, and we're not here to assign blame. Instead, we're using it as a real-world reference point to examine something far more structural. Electric doors, low-voltage systems, and exit safety in Tesla vehicles heading into 2026. This video isn't about fear. It's about design trade-offs, human behavior under stress, and why door technology, something most of us never think about, is quietly becoming part of the safety conversation. Stay with us, because by the end, you'll understand why crash safety alone is no longer the full picture. How Tesla's electric doors actually work. When we talk about a car's safety and user experience, most people instinctively think of crash ratings, seatbelt performance, or structural rigidity. Very few think about how the door itself operates. Yet with modern EVs like Tesla, that's becoming a central part of the equation. At the core, a Tesla door is fundamentally different from what you'd find on a typical internal combustion vehicle. On most traditional cars, opening a door is a purely mechanical action. You pull a handle, a cable or linkage moves, and the latch releases. There's no dependency on the vehicle's electrical system. That's why in many older cars, even after a dead battery, integrated electronics fail, or wiring is cut, the door can still be opened manually. Tesla's approach centers around electronically actuated door handles and latch systems. On models from the Model S in 2012 through the 2025 Cybertruck, and refreshed Model 3 slash Y variants. The exterior handle or interior opening is managed by electronics that rely on the vehicle's low voltage 12 volt system to signal actuators that release the latch. This enables features like flush or retractable door handles that retract into the body for improved aerodynamics and aesthetics, reducing drag and wind noise, which can improve range by measurable amounts integrated software for walk-up unlock and remote keyless access, centralized control over lock-unlock behavior tied to the car's state and user profile. Tesla was among the first automakers to bring these flush handles to mass-market vehicles, notably with the Model S in 2012, and set a trend many others followed. However, this electrical dependency introduces a key trade-off. If the 12-volt system loses power, the normal electrical path to unlatch the door may not function. In at least one federal safety investigation, regulators noted that a lack of sufficient voltage to the door lock actuators was linked to exterior handles becoming inoperative on approximately 174,000 2021 Model Y vehicles, a situation that in several reported cases prevented owners from reopening doors after exiting the vehicle. This doesn't mean Tesla vehicles have zero manual options. They do include mechanical emergency releases inside the cabin. But the usability of these releases varies. On front doors, the manual mechanism is usually visible when the door panel is open. On rear doors of some models, it can be harder to locate, often tucked behind trim or under covers, which may not be intuitive in an emergency. Contrast this with a traditional car. Even if the electrical system dies entirely, you can usually reach out, pull a handle, and open the door without needing power or sequence logic. That's a simple design feature with decades of real-world validation. The reliance on electrical control in Teslas, and many other EVs today, reflects a design priority centered on aesthetics, aerodynamic efficiency, and user convenience, backed by modern software integration. But that comes with a subtle shift in failure modes, and that's not inherently a defect. 
It's a trade-off between a cleaner exterior and reliance on electricity for basic vehicle access. Understanding that trade-off is essential before we ask whether crash safety and exit safety have diverged, and whether doors designed for ideal conditions behave the same way after a severe impact or loss of electrical power. Crash safety versus exit safety. Two different engineering problems. One reason debates around Tesla's electric doors often become confusing is that people tend to merge crash safety and exit safety into a single concept. From an engineering perspective, these are related, but fundamentally different, WUS problems. Crash safety is about what happens during impact. It focuses on energy absorption, structural deformation, and keeping the passenger cell intact. Exit safety, on the other hand, is about what happens after the crash, how easily occupants can leave the vehicle, and how quickly first responders can access them if systems are compromised. Tesla's crash safety record is well documented. Vehicles like the Model 3 and Model Y consistently score at or near the top of NHTSA and Euro NCAP ratings. Their rigid battery pack structure, large crumple zones, and low center of gravity reduce rollover risk and intrusion into the cabin. Statistically, Tesla vehicles show lower injury probability per mile driven, compared to many internal combustion counterparts in similar segments. From a crash survivability standpoint, Tesla has largely solved the problem. In severe impacts, fires, flooding, or structural deformation, scenarios where wiring is damaged or voltage drops rapidly, the electrical pathway can fail. At that point, exit safety depends on whether occupants know about, can reach, and can physically operate the manual release mechanisms. This is not unique to Tesla but Tesla's minimalist interior design and hidden releases amplify the learning curve under stress. Electric doors, by contrast, introduce state dependency. The door behaves differently depending on power availability, software logic, and actuator condition. Importantly, this does not mean electric doors are inherently unsafe. It means they fail differently. Tesla has clearly optimized for crash protection first, preventing injury, even if that means post-crash exit relies on secondary systems. From a statistical safety standpoint, that's a defensible trade-off. The likelihood of surviving a crash is higher, but the probability distribution of how you exit the vehicle afterward becomes wider. When isolated incidents are discussed online, they often frame exit difficulty as proof of a fundamental design flaw. In reality, they highlight a mismatch between user expectation and system behavior. Drivers expect doors to behave mechanically even when they are not. What about Tesla's door evolution? From hidden releases to redundant thinking, Tesla didn't arrive at electric doors fully formed. The system we see today is the result of more than a decade of iteration and, in several cases, correction. The original Model S introduced the idea that doors could be software-managed. Its motorized, retracting handles were designed primarily for aerodynamics and visual cleanliness, not emergency scenarios. Manual releases existed, but they were clearly secondary. At the time, Tesla was betting on the assumption that electrical systems would almost always remain available long enough after a crash. Statistically, that assumption held up but it also created blind spots. With the Model 3 and Model Y, Tesla simplified the exterior hardware but doubled down on electronic control. Flush handles remained, but motorized extension was removed to cut cost and improve reliability. Inside the cabin, manual releases were kept, yet hidden to preserve a clean interior layout. This is where user criticism peaked. The system worked as designed, but under stress, design subtlety became a liability. Tesla's response hasn't been loud, but it has been visible. Starting with later Model Y revisions and the refreshed Model 3, Tesla quietly began making emergency exits more explicit. Labels became clearer, mechanisms were easier to access on front doors, and software logic increasingly prioritized automatic unlock after impact, even in borderline power conditions. These changes weren't framed as safety overhauls, they were incremental, 
but meaningful. The Cybertruck marks a more important philosophical shift. Despite its radical exterior, the Cybertruck treats exit safety as a first-order design problem. Its door architecture emphasizes structural tolerance and mechanical fallback. While still electronically controlled, the doors are designed around extreme deformation scenarios, with clearer physical release paths and reinforced door frames that reduce latch misalignment after impact. This suggests Tesla learned that redundancy isn't a concession. It's a requirement as vehicles become heavier, faster, and more software-driven. This mindset directly informs what we should expect from Model Y Juniper and the upcoming Model 2. Model Y Juniper is not expected to reinvent Tesla's door system, but it will likely refine it. Based on Tesla's recent design direction, Juniper should feature more obvious interior emergency releases, especially for rear passengers, improved low-voltage resilience, allowing door unlock logic to persist longer after crashes. Simplified trim layouts that reduce the chance of passengers missing manual release points under stress. None of these changes would be headline features, and that's intentional. Tesla tends to integrate safety improvements quietly, without marketing them as innovations. Model 2, however, represents a different challenge. As Tesla's lowest-cost, highest-volume vehicle, Model 2 will likely force Tesla to confront door design trade-offs head-on. Cost pressure discourages complex motorized handles, while mass-market buyers bring stronger expectations shaped by decades of mechanical door behavior. The most likely outcome is not a return to purely mechanical systems, but a hybrid philosophy. Electronic convenience layered over a mechanically intuitive fallback that feels obvious, even to first-time users. In other words, Model 2 is where Tesla's door design stops being experimental and becomes normative. If Tesla gets it right, electric doors will no longer be perceived as a risk. They'll simply be another invisible system that works when needed and disappears when it's not. And that's the real endgame of safety engineering. Not perfection in ideal conditions, but predictability when things go wrong. Where electric doors are headed next? Safety regulators don't evaluate doors based on convenience and daily use. They focus on edge cases, loss of power, severe deformation, and occupant evacuation under stress. According to NHTSA data, roughly 25 to 30 percent of serious vehicle fires occur after a crash, not during impact. In those scenarios, exit speed and intuitiveness matter as much as structural integrity. Regulators are unlikely to ban electric doors. A more realistic outcome is standardized redundancy. Clearer labeling, more accessible manual releases, and defined requirements for door operation after power loss. These changes don't reject Tesla's approach. They formalize it. Tesla's recent design trajectory suggests alignment with this direction. Rather than adding complexity, Newer designs emphasize obvious fallback behavior. That's a subtle but important shift. Safety systems shouldn't be clever in emergencies. They should be predictable. Electric doors aren't going away. What's changing is how tolerant they must be to confusion, panic, and failure. If Tesla continues refining that layer, the controversy around them will likely fade. Not because the technology disappeared, but because it finally became boring under pressure. Electric doors aren't about being futuristic. They're about how a car behaves when things go wrong. Most of the time, Tesla's system works exactly as designed. The real question is whether that design still makes sense in the rare moments when power is lost and panic sets in. So, do you feel comfortable relying on electronic doors in an emergency? Comment yes or no to let us know. If you found this breakdown useful, please like the video, subscribe to Auto Gear Shift, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next deep dive into how automotive technology really works.